Welcome friends to another r slash malicious compliance video. Today we've got a great story of scamming the scammer. But first a story from Viroku. Sorry I'm late sometimes. Retail. Many moons ago when I was a sweet young teen, 18 year old male then, 33 year old male now, I was sometimes spotty with arriving on time to work. For context though, the out of town retail park my place was located at had an absolutely tragic traffic flow and design. So you could be 15 to 20 minutes ahead of time and then still be stuck in traffic that long during the busy season. I set off very early during those times and I was often there 30 minutes early as often as 10 minutes late. I would regularly just start early when I arrived anyway because why would I sit there and do nothing? Especially when colleagues needed breaks, which was often. One day the manager pulls me aside and the conversation is basically, your numbers are good but you can't keep arriving late. It's not fair on everyone else and you can't do it again. I was too young to stand up for myself and argue about the traffic and reading other stories that have never worked anyway. So instead, I followed the rule to the letter. When the roads were busy, I accepted that I had to set off even earlier to get there, even if I was burning two hours of my own time for a four hour shift. But the beautiful compliance came thanks to my manager's lack of foresight. I arrived an hour early for one of my shifts, and my manager implores me, Mr. XYZ's been working without a break for six hours and he really needs a break. Could you start early? My response was, I'd be happy to if I finish early too. She laughed in my face and said, it doesn't work like that. I laughed in hers, very subtly, and said, then I don't work like that. This is for sure one of those eras in your life that you think back on later down the road. And you're like, man, why did I let them get away with so much? I was so green then. Have you ever had a job or maybe still have a job where you feel like you're honestly giving up way more than you need to, but you just find it hard to speak up and defend yourself? Or even at a younger age, would you have no problem defending yourself? Let me know about you guys down in the comments. Our next story is from Granny Nugs. I can't have time to work on projects in my office? Okay then. Hoping this goes here, but it made me chuckle when I remembered it today, so hopefully you'll find it humorous as well. Many moons ago, I was newly promoted. I went from worker B to just above worker B. Not a manager, no direct ports or anything, but I did interact with them frequently. I checked in to see other tasks were coming along, offered help and guidance where I could. It was a newly created position, so I got to make it my own. Part of the job was analyzing reports. I'm talking the old dot matrix printed green bar reports with tiny fonts. I also got frequent project requests from higher ups and of course, everything was a rush. So occasionally I would put a sign on the back of my chair to the effect of project work in progress, please do not disturb. Most people respected it and if you really needed help with something, I would pause and help you. Then we got a new director who told his direct report, my boss's boss, this was unacceptable. Then she told my boss, who rolled her eyes and told me. I said certainly, and then asked if that meant I was going to have extended deadlines, since it was impossible to concentrate while being constantly interrupted. Of course, that was a no. So little old me immediately started booking time in the smallest conference rooms I could find, never on my floor, gave the meeting some BS title, Then, if I finished early, I'd spend the rest of the meeting surfing the web or whatever, because screw you John and screw you Amanda. I still got my work done on time, and now I get to shop on your dime. So thanks for that. Oh, I see you've got everything figured out and you're doing your job as optimally as possible, but I don't like that because that means you're working and always busy and you can't help me with everything I want you to help me with, so knock it off. It's just crazy good management going on here. This next story is from Nordy. What was the PO number again? This happened in the mid 90s. I was working at a royalty free music library. We sold music that was licensed to allow the purchaser to do anything they wanted with it. They don't have to worry about copyright and trademark, etc. Imagine the music in the background of every industrial video you've ever seen. Since this took place prior to the internet being a thing, we sold audio CDs. You could buy one or five or ten, all the way up to what we called a full boat. 45 CDs for, I think, $1,000. Some of our customers were educational institutions. It was very common for the person ordering the music to use a purchase order rather than paying up front. They would fax or mail us a copy of the purchase order, which had the cost, a description of the goods being sold, and some sort of unique ID number. 
We would then invoice the university with the PO number and 90 to 100 days later, get paid. My coworker Dwight answered the phones and dealt with mailing the invoices. One day, we sold a full boat to a university somewhere in the Midwest. We shipped off the CDs, and then Dwight realized that the fax with the PO had one number that was illegible. He called the university's finance department and asked for the number. They stated that, per policy, they could not give out any PO numbers. He went back and forth with them for a while, and they got more and more rude. He then asked what would happen if someone submitted an invoice with the wrong number. Nothing was the response. I think you can see where this is going. He printed off and mailed 10 invoices, each in its own envelope, each identical except for the one illegible digit. That digit was changed to cover all 10 possibilities, 0 to 9, thus guaranteeing that we submitted an invoice with the correct PO number. We were lucky that the PO was only numbers, some places mixed letters in. Actually, knowing Dwight, he probably would have enjoyed sending off 36 invoices, 0 to 9 and A through Z. We got paid four times. I respect the effort here. I mean, they were left with literally like no choice. What are you supposed to do when this other side is just refusing to give you the proper PO number? Now, getting paid four times after all that is just like an absolute mega cherry on top. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Our next story is from De Talors, The Office Evolution. From petty revenge to pro-revenge with a dash of malicious compliance. About six years ago, I decided to join the adult world and picked up my first real job doing technical support for a communications company. This place was awesome, great environment, and loved everyone on my team. Couldn't have asked for more. A short while later, I get promoted and have to move to the other side of the office. Enter Villain. Villain was an account manager that I hadn't really had to interact with much in my previous position, but she was friends with some of the other account managers I got along with. Her desk was on the opposite side of mine, with a cubicle wall between us. We would have a monthly beer testing and a separate wine testing each month. Did I mention the job was awesome? And our group of friends melded. Villain was super friendly, and I thought we were on good terms. A few months go by and I get called into my boss's office. There were some reports about me that I was vaping in the office. I was, along with about half of the whole office, but at no point was I obnoxious about it. I made sure to blow what little vapor there was down beneath my desk and out of anyone's way. Anyway, I was like, eh, whatever, smoke really bothers me so it's probably the same for whoever doesn't like vapes. So I quit. The next week, same thing. Get called to the boss's office with another report of vaping. Told him I wasn't doing it in the office. He said, unfortunately, I'd have to get written up the next time if it continued. So the following day, I still take my vape into the office and set it on my desk. But I leave the batteries in my car, so it has no way of even powering on. I get called into the boss again, asking what the freak is going on and why do I keep vaping? My boss vaped himself, so I told him to come with me, took him to my vape, and showed him I had no batteries, and whoever's reporting this is lying. He said he'd take care of it. The following week, yet again, in the boss's office. This time there was a complaint that I'd clipped my fingernails at my desk, which is not against company policy. I did clip a nail every once in a while if it would get broken or whatever, and always did it over my trash can. We both just kind of laughed at the ridiculousness of the situation, and I say, Okay, come on, this is so silly, who is the one that keeps reporting me? Well, if you guessed it was a villain that was reporting me, you guessed right. It was just so ridiculous, I ignored it the next few weeks. The reports ranged from me cursing on the phone to clients, our calls were recorded and I wasn't, to I have too many inappropriate things on my desk. I think I may have been the only one in my office with literally nothing on my desk besides a Magic the Gathering playmat I used as my mouse pad. Finally, one week, I had a pretty rough one and was already a bit agitated. This time it was, I was eating cereal too loudly at my desk. I started to think, maybe I really am really obnoxious to sit by. So I asked the other people by my desk if I was too loud, obnoxious, or whatever at my desk. Everyone else kind of just laughed and asked what I was talking about, and that they could barely hear me on the phone talking to clients, let alone me eating too loudly. All right, villain wants to be petty, I can be petty. Cue the petty revenge. 
I brainstormed for a little while about all the things I could eat at my desk that would really annoy her. I thought potato chips would be loud and annoying but not very sustainable, too unhealthy and I'd get full too fast. Apples maybe? Kind of a hassle, washing it off, dealing with the core, can't really buy it in bulk. I went to the grocery store for more ideas and there was a sale for the family sized Cheerios. Three for the price of one clearance. Jackpot. Not super unhealthy, real crunchy, and I could just snack on them all day long. Gave my other friends I sat with next to a heads up and then proceeded to eat these Cheerios for a good 4 plus hours as loud and as obnoxious as I could for the next couple of days. Of course, villain loses her crap and reports me every single day. My boss and I have a good laugh about it. The next week word spreads around the office and turns out almost no one likes villain in the office. Multiple people I had never even talked to had approached me and said how hilarious they thought the situation was. Three other people brought me things to eat at my desk to annoy her. Carrots from one, celery from the other, and corn nuts from the last. Can't believe I didn't think of carrots or celery. They were both amazing, super loud, and could eat them all day. After a few days of the second week of me doing this, I guess she caught on that reporting me for something not against office policy was getting her nowhere. So she decides to report me for clocking in early and going to get breakfast from the kitchen. Mind you, almost everyone on my team did this. We would clock in 10 to 15 minutes early, start checking our emails, agenda for the day, and then go grab some cereal or fruit from the kitchen and head back to our desk. I actually got a road up this time, but now everyone lost the privilege and they cracked down on clocking in and out. I actually got road up this time, but now everyone lost the privilege and they cracked down on clocking in and out. The few friends she had left did not really like her much after this. One day she walks by and says, well I guess you're not above the rules after all, huh? That's what happens when you don't follow policy. After this I realized, okay. This back and forth is actually starting to put my job in jeopardy. So I quit with the crunching of food and tried to follow company policy to a T. She was still reporting me for the most ridiculous stuff, none of which was against company policy, but it was bi-weekly at this point compared to the multiple times weekly before. A short while later I get an offer from another company that I couldn't refuse, so I put in my two weeks notice. Next day she walks by my desk and casually says, Guess I win, smirks and walks off. Okay, screw that. I'm a pretty competitive person, I don't like losing. Even though I didn't see it like that previously, I did now and I hadn't lost, I still had two weeks left. During this time, all the data breaches and companies selling data was becoming mainstream. So our company had a lot of new policies and training in regards to data. Guess it's time to follow policy. For the next two weeks, I kept a log when Villain would get up from her desk with timestamps and then a timestamp of when she would return. She would never lock her computer, not one time. This was a big no-no according to the new company policy. Over the course of two weeks, five workdays each week, I had two pages full of policy infractions. On average, during an eight-hour workday, she was away from her desk, aka not working, three hours per day. Three hours per day of compromised customer data. As I was doing my rounds saying goodbye on my last day, I spoke with my boss and the director of the office who oversaw all the teams. I filed a report, then went to Villain's desk. She'd already left for the day. I had made it through two of the three Cheerio boxes and figured I'd leave her a parting gift. Not too long after, a friend I worked with messaged me and said she'd been fired. Hmm guess I win. I just can't imagine how annoying it would be to come into work every single day and have to sit down essentially next to somebody you know is going to find some kind of way to either try to annoy you or report you. That person spent more time doing anything other than their job. And our final story of the day is from Evans939. For $5, I wasted a scammer's time by maliciously complying. This happened less than 24 hours ago and I've been telling everyone I know. Now it's Reddit's turn. I just got off work and walking around downtown trying to waste some time. As I'm walking a man bumps his hand into mine. Thinking nothing of it I keep walking until I hear him call me back. The man says oh no my glasses they're broken. I say oh no your glasses they're broken. 
He says, these are expensive glasses. You have to make this right. Oh man, oh man, I felt so bad. This man dropped his expensive glasses when he bumped into me and they broke. How is this man going to get home if he can't see? I had to make this right. The man says, come with me, I know a store. I follow the man a block or two and we arrive to a store that's closed. The man says, shoot, the store's closed. Let's settle this up at the bank. I say, oh, don't worry. I see another store a couple blocks down on Google Maps. Let's check it out. The man follows me, walks into the store. Oh no, they don't fix glasses here. Oh no. The man says, let's go to the ATM. I say, oh no, I don't have my card on me. I only have Apple Pay, but don't worry. I see another store a couple blocks down on Google Maps. They say, oh no, the second store doesn't fix glasses either. The man says, what bank do you use? I say, Capital One. He says, there's no Capital One around here. I say, oh no, I didn't know that. Let's check out another store. Rinse and repeat for five stores, and an hour later we eventually find a store that can repair glasses. I pay the shopkeep five dollars, and the man's glasses were repaired. I did the man right and fixed his expensive glasses after I broke them. Good karma all around, folks. I think I'm still trying to figure out how any of this was really OP's fault. Like, even if you did accidentally bump into somebody in public, do you really have like an obligation to repair their glasses if it fell on the ground and broke? I mean, I would feel bad and you probably would be a jerk if you bumped into somebody and caused that and walked away, but would you really be obligated to do any of what went down here? But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another compliance story that was crazier than any of the ones in this video, click on that left video, or if you missed my latest video, click on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.